fine. Um, I'm here to discuss the series of corporate financial reporting and there are a few topics which I want to discuss with you. Starting with our chapter number one, this is introduction to financial statements because financial statements are one of the basic part of financial reporting which companies does. So in this uh, chapter, I'm going to cover four basic content, uh, starting with the three principal financial statements. Moving on towards the other items of the annual reports, we will also discuss about them. We will also see about generally accepted accounting principles. And then finally, we will look into the barriers which makes financial statements readers difficult to understand these statements. So they, they get, uh, you know, somewhere lost while reading these financial statements. So what are those barriers which causes such circumstances? Starting with who are the users of uh, financial statements. So basically, financial statements are prepared for external people not for the internal management of the company because internal management needs more detailed sort of information. So the basic users of financial statement includes investors, those people who have extra money and they want to invest somewhere. So if they want to decide which company they need to invest or which type of uh, you know security they have to buy, either they go for bonds, either they go for stocks. So these types of investors will typically be looking into the financial performance of the companies to choose the best for them. Then comes the bankers. Uh, in order to give the loans to the companies, bankers will judge the financial performance of the company by looking into different documents, by looking into different scenarios. And one of the basic documents they look into that is the financial statements of the companies. So the bankers, they want to determine whether a company is able to service its debts, means the company will be able to pay its debts or not. For this sake, they have to look into the financial statements of these companies. Moving on towards suppliers. Suppliers also, uh, because it's uh, this in this era, most of the companies, they do the business on credit basis. So for the suppliers, they want to give the loans to those uh, customers who are good in making their payments. So in order to check the good credit worthiness of the client, the suppliers also look into the financial statements of their clients or their customers. Then the customers of the companies, they also, uh, you know, try to check uh, the performance of the company. Why do they do so? Because uh, for those uh, products for which the company has made the long-term promises in form of uh, service warranty or in form of warranty uh, claims. So customer wants to see that this company, will it really exist after such time? Usually, you know, the companies who are providing electronics or technology type products, they provide the post-sale services to their customers. So the customers of these companies will be looking into the financial strength of these companies in order to make sure uh, the existence of these companies in the future. Then comes the tax authorities. Tax authorities also check the financial statements of the companies to make sure that the companies are paying fair amount of taxes. Then comes trade union representatives. Trade union representatives also uh, check the financials of the companies. Why they do that? Because they have to fix the wage rate uh, or they have to negotiate the wage rate with the company's management. So based on the financial strength, they will be deciding that are they in going to increase the pay uh, rates or what will be their requirement. Then competitors, they also check uh, the financial uh, performances of the companies by looking into their financial statements because they benchmark their own performance with the company's performance. So in that case, they will be looking into the financial statements. Code of law. Uh, code of law uh, means any law authorities. They will be uh, checking the financial statements to measure, for example, if a company has uh, uh, done some practices which has caused, uh, you know, the damages to their competitors or to other industry participants. So before imposing, uh, you know, uh, the fine on the these companies, they will be checking uh, the unfair trade practices of these companies and finding out how much profit a specific company has gained by uh, by practicing these unfair trade uh, practices so that a proper amount of uh, fine could be imposed on these companies. 
Then antitrust regulators, they also find out uh, in the performance of the companies by checking their market share, or you can say the uh, profit performance of the companies. Uh, why do they do so? Because they need to make sure that the fair competi competition is happening in the market. Then the prospective employees, uh, if you want to join a company, you will be, of course, looking into the financial strength of the company so that you make sure that how does this company deals with the employees in the long term? Uh, why? Because they will be paying your salaries if they are good in financials. If they are weak in financials, your salaries could be laid. And these things, uh, you know, bonuses and other stuff. So all these things you can judge by looking into the financial strength of the companies. Why the financial statements are not helpful for the management of the company? So the corporate management, they are not the users of the financial statements. As I already mentioned that they need another set of financial statements. So financial statements, they are the responsibility of the management, but they don't uh, provide useful information to the management because their required information is detailed. Corporate managers, they use financial statements to communicate the, to, because companies, they, they need to show their you know, performance to the users of financial statements. So for that purpose, for this communication sake, corporate managers uses the financial statement to show the financial strength and the profitability of the business to the external users of financial statements. In detail, why the financial statements are not useful for the corporate managers? Because they are highly aggregated. What is highly aggregated means that they show a total figure for each and every line item of the financial statements. So it's not useful. So it might be an income statement, you have sales figure, but how much sales in which month, uh, how many credit sales, how much uh, uh, cash sales, Total of cash sales and credit sales we can find in the notes to financial statement, but the extra stuff that monthly basis statements and uh, sales return, monthly basis, sales allowances, monthly basis, these details will not be there in the financial statement. Also for accounts receivable, we can find the total facts and figures in the balance sheet, but we cannot have the details in the financial statements. So for extra details, company needs to look into the internal documents so that's why financial statements are highly aggregated document. Large number of details are in small uh, line items. They are aggregated. Due to this, there is a lot of detail missing, which is not for the practical use of managers in making the decision. Internal decision making and management control requires data that is more detailed than the data found in the annual reports. Then third point is financial statements. They are basically historical document of the recent past. You prepare financial statement once if you are preparing the quarterly financial statements. So they will be prepared once the quarter is over. History, not future, not present. If you are preparing the annual financial statements, whole year is over. It's history, it's recent past. So decision making is always for the future. Managers, they take the decisions for forward looking, not for the previous one. So manager plan, budget and forecast, and they therefore need systems that help them to perform the critical functions, not the old financial statements. And also accounting rules like IFRS and GAAP, they are designed to measure the cost and the value of assets, uh, which are for the reporting purpose, for the user's purpose. Uh, these could be the misleading figures for the managers. So uh, that's why for managers, they need to, to focus on the cost accounting principle or managerial accounting rules and regulations uh, in order to properly uh, or accurately calculating the cost and analysis. So uh, accounting rules and uh, IFRS, let's suppose, they are designed to create the uniformity among the whole industry participants. They are not designed to help the managers to do their internal, you know, uh, budgeting and forecasting. So for that sake, these reports are not helpful for the managers. So these are the four reasons why the financial statements are not helpful for the management of the organization. 
The three principal financial statements which we will be discussing in this chapter, it includes balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. Starting with balance sheet, balance sheet shows us a year-end picture or the snapshot of a year-end for the assets owned by the company and the financing for those assets. From where the financing comes? Financing comes from the liabilities and from the equity. So basically, balance sheet, balance sheet shows us a complete pictures of assets, liabilities, and equity. We all know that assets are the economic resources. Economic resources mean that they have the ability to generate the future benefits for the business. These benefits could be in form of profits or in form of cash flows. Financing of these assets happens in two ways, in two basic forms, with the help of liabilities and with the help of owner's equity. Liabilities are the debts or the obligations which company have to pay. So these are the claims which creditors have on the assets of the company. Why? Because because of these debts and obligations, company is able to purchase the assets. So basically, these creditors have a claim on these assets. Whereas shareholders' equity is the money contributed by the owners in the business. So owners, they invest in the business by giving the direct or indirect investment. Direct investment in, is in form of purchasing the shares, whereas the indirect investment is in form of retained earnings. Retained earnings belongs to the owners, right? So um, we retain this profit for the future investment sake. That's why we say this is owner's money, but it is indirectly they are investing in the business. So this is uh, how our balance sheet looks like. Your asset side should be equal to liabilities and the owner's equity. Right side, or you can say the asset side of uh, the balance sheet should always be equal to the liability and the owner's equity side because these resources are arranged by taking these, by taking finance from these sources, liabilities and shareholders' equity. So, uh, liabilities and shareholders' equity, they do not just only represent the financing which you, have, which you have organized in order to purchase these resources. They are actually the claims on the assets of the companies. So the claims means they say these assets belong to them. Liabilities gave us money to buy these assets. Owners gave us money to buy these assets. So they both have claim. So in case of liquidation, when company is closing up the business, company will sell all its assets and firstly, the liabilities or creditors will be paid first. And then whatever will be left over, that money will be given to the owners of the company. So that's why shareholders are known as residual claim holders because they get what is this left over, whatever is residual. Shareholders equity represent the residual claim on the assets, so it have whatever size it needs to be in order to ensure that the two sides of the equation are balanced. So at the time of the liquidation, let's suppose your original assets were 4,000, but when you sell them, because you was in hurry, you sell them only for 3,500, so your asset side becomes 3,500 because of conversion of known can assets into cash. So total assets will be 3,500, not 4,000, but your liability and shareholders' equity side would be 4,000. So what does they say? They say whatever is left over, you'll be paying them to the owner's equity so that both sides are balanced. So for example, the shareholder's equity is 2,500 and 1,500 were liabilities. So out of 3,000, 3,500, 1,500 will be given to the liabilities rest 2000 will be given to the owners not 2500 we can give them only 2000 because we want to make both side of equation equal equal to 3500 let's move on towards the next um, statement which is income statement so income statement shows us the profitability situation of the company in different levels 
So income statement reports the company's profit during the accounting period. It reflects as whatever company has accomplished during the full time period. So revenues, they don't show the year end figure. They show as the monetary value of goods and services sold during the whole year to the customers, not at the year end throughout the year from January till December. Then comes the first level of expenses, which is known as cost of goods sold, CGS. So this is the cost company has, uh, you know, used in order to earn the money or to earn the revenue. So you incur cost to pick the product. So cost of goods sold for these sold, sold items will be reflected as the first level of expenses. And then the first level of profit you will get after deducting this cost of goods sold from the revenue that is known as gross profit or gross margin. So this measures the revenue net of first level of cost. Then we have operating income. How do we get the operating income? Once we subtract all the operating, you know, expenses from our net sales. Here, net sales means cost minus cost of goods sold, revenue minus cost of goods sold. So once you deduct cost of goods sold and operating expenses from your revenues, you get your operating income. This income does not include the payment of taxes. Okay, so it is excluding taxes. It measures how well the company has done in a given period of time from its normal recurring day-to-day -day activities or from its normal operation. What are the normal operations? Selling the goods and services. So uh, in order to do, uh, sell these goods and services, company has to produce these goods and services which are covered in cost of goods sold. Then company has to incur, uh, you know, uh, advertisement, promotion, traveling, salaries, these expenses to sell these goods properly. So they are operating expenses. You deduct them and you get your operating income. Then you have net income. You get the net income when you deduct taxes and all the non-cutting uh, operating source of income and expenses. So uh, non-operating uh, means uh, other income and expenses. It includes your gain on, um, you know, a, a revaluation of your securities, uh, trading securities, or you can say some unseen uh, losses you have, which is not from the operations, uh, then your interest expenses, all these things comes under non-operating uh, source of income and expenses. You add all the other income and you deduct all the other expenses and then you deduct the tax. Finally, you get your net income. So these are the different levels of uh, income uh, or you can say profits in the income statement. So you have here an example over here. Uh, if you see the, the this one, the boxes, you have net in sales. Then from the net sales, you deduct cost of goods sold. Then you deduct all other expenses. You get your operating profit. They did not mention the gross profit. If you want to add, you will have it over here. Total sale, net sales minus cost of goods sold, you will have your gross profit. Then you deduct your operating expenses out of it. You get your operating profit. Then all other expenses, when you deduct, you get your net income. Moving on towards the third major statement, that is cash flow statements. The cash flow statement summarizes the inflows and outflows of the cash that happened during the year from the three major primary activities of the business. So what are those activities? First, we have operating activities, then we have investing activities, then we have financing activities. If I say operating activities, operating activities means whatever activities you have done in order to perform the operations. And if you remember, income statement is about operating activities. So my income statement, I guess means my income statement will be helping me in calculating the operating activity section. In chapter number four, we will be discussing cash flow statement in more detail. 
Then comes uh, investing activities. Investing activities shows all the investments you have done during the year. So you have done investment in the property, plants, and equipment, which is machinery and equipment. You have done investment in the securities of other companies by, by, by purchasing the bonds. You have done investments in, uh, you know, um, uh, non-intangible assets. So all these are your investments. And then you sell them, you get inflows of cash. So outflows and inflows both in the investing activities. So uh, non-current assets will be helping me in making the investing activity section of the cash flow statement. Then comes financing activities. As in the balance sheet, we already discussed that the long-term liabilities and uh, uh, equity are the source of financing activities. So the long-term loans, then issuing of the shares, they are the inflows. Then you purchase back your shares, which is treasury shares, that's an outflow. Payment of the dividend, that's also an outflow. Paying off your loan, that's also an outflow. Borrowing the money is an inflow. So these are different you know, items in the financing activity section. So I must say long-term liabilities and honors equity are the source of financing activities in the cash flow statement. Current assets and current liabilities also supports in making our operating activity section. Why? Because current assets and current liabilities are the results of operations. You sell the goods, but you did not collect the money in cash, so accounts receivable are generated. They are current assets. You have paid the rent for your building in advance, so money goes from your hand because of a current asset, which is as a result of operation. Paying rent is operations, right? So that's prepaid rent, so it's a current asset. Current liabilities, your employees has worked for full year, but you did not pay them salaries. Salaries expenses generated, that's the result of operation, but you are you're generating salaries payable. Then rent payable, then accounts payable. So all these are the results of operations. So in summary, current assets, current liabilities, and income statements helps us in creating operating activities of the cash flow. Non-current assets helps us in preparing investing activities section. Long-term liabilities and honors equity helps us in preparing financing activities section. When you are done with preparing of all these three sections, you net off your answer and the net cash flow, which you get by netting off the answer, net cash flow during the period for all the three activities, it must be equal to the change in the cash, net increase or decrease. What does it mean? In your balance sheet, you have two years balance sheet. Let's suppose 2022 and 2023. I'm writing this 23. Two years balance sheet. In 2022, you have a cash balance of 12,000. And in 2023, you have a cash balance of, let's suppose, 14,000. So how much cash increase? that increased with 2000 during the year. That's why 2023 cash is 2000 more than 2022. So they say that balance sheet, this difference should be equal to your answer, what you are getting by adding these three activities of the cash flow statement. The statement, what this cash flow statement ultimately tells us, it tells us the activities that gave rise means those activities which brings the cash flow to the companies and those activities which took the cash flow, which have used the cash from the business. So how these statements are related? Just now I showed you one component that the balance sheet cash difference should be equal to the answer of cash flow. So let's see how these three statements look similar or is they linked with each other. Number one, the net income of the income statement is reflected in both, which both the retained earnings, whatever net income we earn, we add it to our retained earning account, right? So retained earnings is in balance sheet. So net income is connected to the balance sheet. Also, it is the first item in the operating activity section of the cash flow statement. In indirect method of cash flow statement, we started from the net income. 
So this is how income statement is connected with the balance sheet and cash flow statement. The net cash flow from the statement of cash flow, the first line, plus the beginning cash on the balance sheet must equal to the ending cash. Let's go back. They say that whatever uh, net cash you get by adding these three activities, if you add this, for example, my answer for these three activities total is 2000. So they say that if I add the opening balance into this, which is 12,000, I will get the ending balance, which is 14,000. Third one, net increase or decrease in cash flow recorded in the cash flow statement must be equal to the difference between the cash balances of both here and the balance sheet. Can you see? They say that whatever net increase or decrease you get, this one, it should be equal to the difference between opening and ending balance of the balance sheet. So this is how cash flow statement is connected to the balance sheet. It is expected that the company's performance as reflected in the income statement to influence its cash flow and for both profit and cash flow to influence in the balance sheet. So they say that income statement affects your cash flow statement and the balance sheet, whereas cash flow statement uh, affects uh, the balance sheet of the company. So these three statements are connected in this way. Um, when we talk about financial reporting, it does not include only the financial statements. It includes more items as well. So the annual reports of the companies includes not only financial statement, but these items as well. Starting with the statement of change in shareholders' equity. We already taught you that uh, how uh, the shareholders' equity statement looks like in financial uh, state, uh, financial accounting. You study preparing the state uh, shareholders' equity. So companies, they also make it a part of their uh, annual reports. So this is also mentioned over there. So this is a schedule that explains the change in all the shareholders' equity account, uh, which is reflected in the balance sheet. Uh, along with this, we have a lot of footnotes, so many notes to financial statements. So these are the disclosures, which comes after the financial statements. Uh, it helps the reader to understand that how, uh, you know, each and every line item of the financial statement is prepared. So these are the supplement disclosure used at the bottom of the financial statement to remind the reader that the statements cannot be fully understood without reading these notes. Usually, which type of information we report in these notes? So which accounting policies are used by the company? So let's suppose... Uh, uh, in order to uh, calculate the depreciation, we have different methods. So uh, which method you have used, then which policy uh, you have used for uh, the inventory. So all these things will be mentioned for the company's sake. Then it also uh, tells some present, uh, some additional details, which is about uh, clarifying the details, one or more financial statement line items. Let's suppose if we say accounts receivable, so its details will be mentioned in notes to financial statement that how many are, you know, that uh, aging schedule, they might mention that aging schedule, they might mention the nearby collect collectible of accounts receivable, how many clients are there in this accounts receive, receivable. So these details will be mentioned in notes to financial statement. Moving on towards auditor's opinion, it is also the part of the annual report. We all know that auditors gives uh, an opinion about the financial statements of the companies after going through them. So it is an opinion form. It is from an independent accounting form. Uh, they attest the company's financial statements uh, that are the correctly prepared and then why they do that because investors need to rely on these statements and different parties have I told you external users a few minutes back so all those external users decisions are dependent on these statements so that's why auditor needs to give a reasonable assurance about the financial statements of the company so the report which auditor gave or the opinion which auditor gave it has basically three paragraphs the first paragraph 
what does as the scope of the opinion that we this opinion is about what this opinion is about financial statements or about the internal control practice this and then the, there is an also statement of responsibility uh, which says that we are testing only this part rest responsibility lies with the management okay so this is how the auditor uh, you know talks in the first paragraph or his of his opinion the second paragraph tells us about uh, a confirmation or it affirms that the uh, audit was conducted according to the auditing profession or you can say the standard auditing standards used by the country the final paragraph gives the opinion the results of this audit uh, there are usually three types of opinions with auditor gives firstly unqualified opinion when in normal life we say somebody is unqualified it means that he does not you know have a good uh, results about a position or something but in audit unqualified opinion is the best it's a clean opinion it says that the uh, financial statements unqualify for the materiality means the financial statements are clear from the materiality issue so uh, this is the best opinion the second opinion is qualified Qu qualified means most of the things are correct but there are some serious uncertainties in the statement which should be corrected and finally disclaim opinion this claim opinion means we cannot give any opinion because of the limitations cop limitation or some other sort of limitations so which ever one of the opinion will be there from the auditor in the auditor's opinion part of the annual report moving on toward we also have management uh, discussion about the company's performance their analysis so they this chart or different ratios analysis in the graphical form so this is an extended letter from the firm's management and what does this letter say is it uh, summarizes it provides a summary about the significant factors which affected the company in the last year for which the financial statements are presented also what were the strengths of the companies and what were the cash flow position usually for last few years um, usually they say about two or three years it also contains an extensive discussion about the business risk factors and what is the future what on what grounds management is working what are the management expectations about the future operations or earnings of the company because financial statements they only provide as the historical view but what is going to happen in the future in which contracts the company is in these details will be provided by the management in their report which is the part of the annual report let's talk about um, generally accepted accounting principle we know that there are many principles which are used but usually they all are all agreed on a similar ground so gap generally accepted accounting principle it includes all the rules and principles which helps the management which helps the companies how to prepare the financial statements so uh, uh, gap sets the rules under which financial statements are prepared in summary you can say that um, we have IFRS as well we have used uh, US gap as well uh, con countries in the world who are using US gap they call it international gap or they have transformed their own uh, rules to the gap or ifrs base based so us gap prevails in us and who made this uh, this accounting rules fasb which is financial accounting standard board they made these rules it's a private sector body and their job is to make uh, uh, you know financial reporting appropriate because the business environment keeps on changing so they make sure that the companies they have consistent in their financial reporting so that the readers are not in trouble moving on towards ifrs international financial reporting standards they are made by iasb which is international accounting standard board this is uh, implemented throughout the europe or european union countries and many asian countries are also following ifrs IFRS is a bit, you know, uh, relaxed because it covers a wide, uh, uh, wide, uh, you can say, uh, countries or so many countries as compared to the U.S. GAAP. So it gives more options and it gives lenient choices. There are differences in both of, you know, regimes like GAAP and IFRS, but most of the primary objectives are same. Most of the rules are same, and with the, you know, uh, with 
the conversions or with the you know unification most of the standards are similar so they say that they are trying to make a single set of global standard but actually they already made uh, the single set of international standards locally every country have its own rules as well so every country is opting to their local rules but they have to implement the standardized rules by cap and ifrs as well let's move on towards uh, the barriers in understanding the financial statements though uh, companies they provide a lot of details in the financial reporting and because of these a uh, uh, huge amount of details the volume of the data provided in these financial statements it's too much so it makes reader you know overwhelmed it means uh, a reader is reading too much information that he lose his point of uh, concentration and in this way he might be lost or he might be confused by reading different information which is provided to them then accounting choices gap and ifrs they provide uh, different choices broad range of range of choices to uh, you know uh, the companies because it's not for one country it's so many for many countries of the world so that's why they don't have exactly the strict rule they give you choices like if you talk about the inventory method you have different methods to record the ending inventory you can go for fifo first in first out you can go for lifo last in first out you can go for weighted average method same is the case for depreciation you have many methods uh, revenue recognition principle has also many relaxations so so uh, they get choices so for the readers uh, you know when they are comparing the statements of different companies they become uh, confused it becomes complex for the reader to understand however it is a logical thing because of the diversity in the business world all the businesses are not same they are diverse so they need to have the relaxed Uh, you know uh, rules ifrs and gap they uh, they should be flexible enough to accommodate all sort of business model so how the readers uh, get their uh, you know complication overcome so they take the, take the help of different financial analysts who draft the statement for them in the similar way so that the comparison becomes easy moving on towards the next barrier that is earning management so um, earning management is a tool which is used by the corporate management uh, and it uh, creates the biasness or it creates the distortion in the company's financial statements which is not appreciated so a company's uh, a commonly used term that is used to describe the conscious conscious means known management know consciously management uh, tries to distort or bias the corporate reports earning management can be a great tool for the management to mislead the capital market by showing their good results um Uh, what could be the possible example faulty revenue recognition the re revenue is not recognized yet but management is recording it as a revenue to good show good picture of uh, net income then improper recognition of losses and expenses they are underestimating their losses and expenses to show a good picture of profits then um, research and development costs they are not uh, you know uh, putting it in expenses they are putting it as a part of product cost. and making it the part of inventory so these are are the tools of earning management which makes the profits look good but real in real in the real world they are not the good ones so uh, this tool is not uh, you know ap uh, appre uh, appreciated management should not go for it and then uh, and it could mislead the readers then comes incompleteness uh, you know uh, for the accounting people they know that there are so many intangible assets which company cannot record in its financial statements because they are not allowed to be recorded like uh, most common example is goodwill you cannot record the goodwill until and unless you purchase a full business unit but businesses have good repute because of their experienced employees because of their good services so intangible assets 
assets which are developed in the companies are included in the balance sheet only when company purchase an asset uh, or you can say company purchase something from another company like I gave you an example of goodwill also patents you can only uh, write them in there in your balance sheet as an intangible asset when you purchase it so other than that internally developed things internally developed formulas which are not registered they will not be the part of your financial statements so intangible assets they are not completely reported now the sophisticated readers means non readers they will know that everything cannot be revealed in the financial statements but what about an initial reader who is not good uh, you know in accounting they are judging everything from the financial statements they might not understand these things so it makes financial statements a bit tricky for these readers but yes, management can overcome this by describing such things in their, uh, you know, management statement. They can tell about the expertise of their employees and something like that so that uh, uh, beginners or uh, the initial readers, they can understand such complications. So this is it about the introduction to the financial statements of the companies and about the financial reporting. We have talked about different contents in the annual reports. We have talked about barriers for the readers. I'll come back uh, with some exercises for this chapter soon. Uh, please listen to the recording. Whatever concerns you have, please write them in the comment section and I will be answering them soon. Take care, everyone. See you with the next video. Bye.